Elaborating on a use case with UML 2.0, Activity, Analysis, Communication, Class, and Sequence Diagrams. The Use Case Diagram. This is a simple use case scenario that describes how a greeter might greet customers at a store when they come in. Greeter is the actor, and greet is the use case. This is a C-level use case because this is what the actor is really trying to accomplish. That's the actor's job, is to greet. C-level use cases depend on other types of use cases in order to get them done. These are called fish-level use cases. An example of a fish-level use case for the greeter, uh, as part of greeting a customer, the greeter might be required to say hello. So this is part of a greeting. Another fish-level process might be to offer a cart. These are all parts of the greet use case. The important thing is to figure out your actors and your C-level use cases. These have also been called your top-level use cases. The use case will be used to create an activity diagram. Activity diagram. So we'll leave the use case over here so you can see what use case this is for. But this activity diagram demonstrates a start point and an end point for, the, for completing this use case greet. So, okay, starting here, first step is wait for customer, and here you have what's called a guard. It's basically a conditional statement. If there is no customer, well, you just come on back in and you wait for customer. If there's no customer, you keep waiting. Otherwise, uh, go down here, and here this, these two parallel lines illustrate that there are two parallel processes that are going to run. So, I'm wait I've waited for the customer. If there is a customer, at the same time, I will say hello and I will smile. And then when I'm done with that, I will offer them a cart. If they refuse a cart, we are done. Or else I will get them the cart and then we are done. So it's important to create activity diagrams for all of your critical C-level use cases. We can now start using classification. We can classify the objects of the process we are trying to model. These classes that we come up with will undergo further refinement later before we actually decide upon a physical class model. So for the use case of greet, where my greeter is greeting customers, we have, uh, you can break your classification down into three categories. You have boundary classes, you have entity classes, and you have control classes. So my boundary is uh, my interface to this particular use case, and the interface in this use case is the door. The customer will walk through the door. Uh, my entity classes are, these are classes that are just specifically pertain to this business process and what's really involved. What are the things? What are the business things? Uh, and in this case, the business things that really are involved in the process are a greeter, a shopper, and a shopping cart. And then there's control objects. And the control objects are sort of, these are objects, these are classes that uh, manage how the entity objects interact. So in this particular case, my control class is the steps of uh, the, the proper steps on how to greet is, uh, is, will keep me controlled. So a quick review. I have a use case of a greeter who greets. I have taken that C-level use case, created an activity diagram for it that describes the sequence of events, and based on that sequence of events and the details and the elaboration of that use case, I was then able to determine the classes, the classifications of the objects that are used uh, from an analytical standpoint uh, in this particular process.
communication diagram. So now that I have my analysis classes for my greet use case, I can break those down into a communication diagram and I can use those classes to describe the interaction that I envision will happen between those classes to uh, bring about this use case. So here's how I envision these classes interacting. I've got my door boundary class here and it opens and in comes a customer. Uh, that's step one. Step two, down here you're actually going to see that uh, step two is broken down to two pieces. A2 here uh, indicates that step two is a parallel process. It's the first parallel process, that's why the A. However, it's step two, so that you can say they're both step two. If there were another parallel process that came down the road, it would be B and whatever step uh, you, were, you were at at that point. So I know now that these two are at the same time. The greeter, step two, at the same time, will smile and say hello to the customer. Step three, the greeter will offer the cart. Now step four is a conditional. You can see I've got a guard here. If the customer wants the cart, then the greeter will get the cart object. And then uh, step, that's 4.1 actually, because that's if the customer wants the cart. 4.2 down here is the greeter gives the cart to the customer. So you can see here these notations being used. This is these are classes, these rectangles. Another way to view classes. We've now seen the analysis classes to review. Uh, this was an earlier way to kind of envision what the classes were. Once we envisioned those classes, we were immediately be able to put them to use. We were immediately able to put them to use in a communication diagram to envision how they're going to communicate with one another. class diagram. Okay, so now we're going to get down and really define the classes that we need in order to perform this use case. So the greet use case can be broken down into these classes. Now in the class diagram we're going to want to be as specific as we want the final software to be. These are not just diagram classes. They will be the structure of the actual code classes. So here you see I've given my uh, customer the ability to push a cart and to buy things. Um, my greeter can do a lot of things. My greeter is a, this is inheritance here, it is an employee. Employees have an ID and a start date. They can punch the clock. My greeter can say hello, etc. Shopping carts have a maximum capacity, etc. So you can see that in the top box here of the, the one rectangle goes the name of the class. In the second box inside of there goes the properties of that class, the attributes, the, the characteristics of that class. Uh, and then in the very bottom compartment here goes the, the capabilities, the methods, the actions that that class can perform. Sequence diagram. So now that we've seen a class diagram that shows exactly the way our software objects should appear, Let's have a look at a sequence diagram that uses those objects. So here's a sequence diagram. This would be the next thing we could create. Keep in mind, this sequence diagram, like all the other diagrams we've talked about so far, refers back to our original use case diagram, greet. So this is a different view. Now that we've defined our classes, here they are along the top. And the way that you read a sequence diagram is from the left side to the right side. You start at the top and you move your way down. So the door opens and a customer comes in. The greeter, in parallel, smiles and says hello to the customer. The next step, the greeter offers a cart. And then, optionally, the greeter might get a cart and give a cart to the customer. So you can see time flows downward through the diagram. And that's how you elaborate on a single C-level use case.